I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Obicast, the Chagas Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you latest insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this week's episode we're going to focus on finishing lambs and the impact that diet and management can have on it. I'm joined by Dr Tim Keady to discuss some key aspects of this. Tim starts off by talking about the level of performance can be achieved at grass in the late autumn, what the targets are and the impact the concentrate supplementation can have. Putting that in context in a difficult finishing year, we move on to discuss indoor finishing and some of the key considerations with them systems from the expected finishing date to the facilities available. We will concentrate price and hold them high, producers will be looking on alternative diets. Tim explains the impact of forage inclusion in the finishing diet by comparison ad lib concentrate finishing systems in terms of growth rate, carcass gain and killer percentage. We discuss the margin over feed in these systems and the impact of increased carcass and concentrate price has on profit. We finish up discussing the impact of shear nut housing and other management practices on the productivity of these indoor finishing systems. We start off with Tim giving us some context about the number of lambs finished in the latter half of the grazing season. There's a, a good throughput of lambs going through the abattoirs at the moment. Annually in Ireland, approximately 20% of the lambs are slaughtered between January and March, and this is a sizable proportion of the annual kill. For these for these animals to be available at that time, they have to be finished on different systems. And these types of systems vary dramatically. Some people try and put them on graze grass and to kind of store them or to get some finish on them and either finish them at concentrated pasture or put them indoors and feed them mixed diets, either high quality forages or high ad lib concentrate feeding systems. Tim, there's a lot of lambs still in the system that would have to be killed between now and Christmas, not really fall into that traditional hogget system. The kind of levels of performance they've achieved at grass this back end is possibly slightly lower than previous years, given just the weather conditions we've had. What kind of an impact will that have on them? It'll have a fair impact, here. Uh, this has been a challenge in uh, autumn uh, at grazing, particularly in the last four weeks where quite an amount of rain has fallen. But it goes back to the basics. The basics clearly show that if you want to get performance from graze grass, that you have to graze them to an optimum sward height and you also have to be grazing in leafy uh, sward. So in other words, you're not f- forcing them to eat stemmy low digestibility material down into ground level. So, for example, a number of studies have been undertaken at Athen Rye previously looking at the effect of uh, animal for- at lamb performance from grazed pasture. And they found that when they were grazing lambs in even set stock systems down to about six centimetres, they're getting about 150 grams per lamb per day during October, November. When they bought the post grazing sport height down to five centimetres, the, the lamb performance reduced to 120 grams per lamb per day. But when they bought it down to four centimetres, they actually penalised the animals and lamb performance went down as low as 60 grams per lamb per day. So that's kind of showing us that if we want to get um, acceptable levels of lamb performance, which is achievable from well-managed pastures in the autumn, that the post-grazing sport height needs to be increased up to about five to six centimetres. And if later in this season you want to graze it down and clean out the pastures, an option of doing it is putting yos that are pregnant into the system that are lambing next March and getting them to clean out the swords before they're either moved off the farm or moved into the houses in Christmas time or early January. Also, a number of studies have been undertaken to look at the effect of concentrate feeding and uh, concentrate feeding at pasture has shown that uh, if you're going with low quant- quantities, and this is extremely low, 0.3 of a kilo or even 0.5 of a kilo, that uh, the level of performance had been increased from about 114 grams per day up to about 180 grams per day for a quarter of a kilo and up to 220 grams per day per 0.5 of a kilo. And the data would show that when you went in with the first increment to concentrate, it took 5.5 kilos of concentrate to produce a kilo of carcass, whereas when you went in with the second increment to concentrate, the efficiency started to decline because grass was being replaced with concentrate, and it took 9.2 kilos of concentrate to replace a kilo of carcass. But even at today's prices, that that 9.2 kilos of concentrate uh, relative to carcass prices standing today at about 6.50 is still justifiable. Well, that's a grazing optimal levels performance can be achieved. Maybe to put that in context of where we are at the moment with current grazing conditions, Tim, likely a long way behind some of them targets, even in well-managed systems. Ah, uh, we are, of course, yeah. Uh, a lot, there's an awful lot of store lambs in the system. They're coming from farms that had relative uh, moderate grassland uh, management during the, during the main grazing season for different season for different reasons, including lack of concentrate feeding because of concentrate price and possibly availability or the quality of uh, herbage availability 
due to uh, the price of uh, fertilizer and less usage, particularly on sheep farms this uh, cor- this current grazing season. So we look at them lambs, possibly the performance of behind where it should be, with them now at the tail end of the year, as you indicated, they really are grazing conditions at the moment are less than ideal and possibly we need to prioritise that for a young flock. If we're looking at the option, Tim, of housing those lambs, you might just take me through the different systems and some of the kind of key considerations, maybe before embarking on it. Well, you know, it's like in any system, for example, if you're finishing beef cattle, it's the same with, fin- with store lambs. The three main factors that are going to affect your profitability is the buying price of your lamb, the feed price or the cost of feeding the animal, and the price that you get uh, when you kill the animal, uh, whenever you decide to kill them, the price per kilo of carcass. So if you're if you've got lambs either that you're purchasing or lambs coming from your own flock uh, at the moment, you have two. Cho- you have to ask yourself this: what system do you want to be involved in? Firstly, when do you want to have them killed? Do you want to kill them relatively in the short period? If so, then you're talking about an adlib concentrated feeding system because our data would show that it is possible to get uh, five kilos of carcass being put onto animals in an adlib concentrated feeding system in about thirty four days. But if we take the same system where we put in high quality grass silage, which is 75% DMD and feed about 0.8 of a kilo of concentrate, it takes 53 days to get the animal into the, to get five kilos of carcass onto the same animals. So to decide at the moment what system you're going to go into will depend on when you want the animal to finish or to be sold out off your farm, firstly. Secondly, is what feeds have you available? There's no point in saying you're going to go into a feeding animals high quality grass silage if you don't have it available because to pur- to f- purchase it in some areas of the country is going to be cross prohibitive prohibitive and the availability may not be it may, it may be difficult to find it. So in that kind of a situation, then you're limiting yourself to a Nedlib concentrate feeding system or feeding relatively high levels of concentrate and a bit of forage such as hay or medium feed value grass silage. Another consideration is what housing you have available. Uh, are you using housing that you're going to require later in the winter for bringing in your ho- for bringing in your ewes prior to lambing, or ha- are you set up in a system where you can bring in two or three batches of lambs and you want to turn them over? So it all depends on what housing availability that you have. That's going to change in every farm. Look, you touched on something and you you threw some really interesting figures about the effect of data. I know you did some work on this previously. We we'll concentrate price where it is, Tim. And look, there is the caveats that there is different systems there. Would you just take me through what kind of levels of performance were you getting at different feed, concentrate feed levels and different forages that you fed? What kind of an impact have they on the finishing period and kind of performance you're achieving the lambs and kill out you're getting on them? We undertook a number of studies at Atenry where we looked at uh, a number of different forages. And by forages, I'm talking about grass silage with medium feed, feed value, which was 71%. Uh, grass silage with high feed value, which was 75%, and maize silage, which was a high dry matter, high starch concentration of 27% dry matter, 27% starch. In addition to that, each of them forages were supplemented with different levels of concentrate, going from 0.3 up to 1 kilo of concentrate per lamb daily. Our last treatment in each of the studies was an ad-lib concentrate feeding system where the animals had access to ad-lib concentrate from 10 days post-housing and they were offered 0.5 of a kilo of high feed value grass silage daily so for, for their forage component or long forage to aid uh, improve uh, digest, to, to prevent digestive upsets. The levels of performance that we got in these studies varied from as low as 50 grams per lamb per day. And this was where they were offered uh, 300 grams of concentrate per day with a 71% DMD grass silage. And the highest level of performance we got was 248 grams per day where the animals were actually fed at, at, at lip concentrate. But more importantly, I don't think in this kind of a scenario or finishing system, I think we should be talking about carcass gain and not live weight gain. So the carcass gains varied from 15 grams per lamb per day for the mediocre, for the medium feed value silage supplemented with 0.3 per kilo concentrate up to 150 grams of carcass gain for the animals that were ad- offered ad lib uh, feeding. You may ask, what's the importance of talking about carcass gain? Well, let's put it this way. If you house lambs at about 40, 38 to 40 kilos lightweight with an objective of putting five kilos of carcass onto them before you slaughter them, then the affected diet will have a major impact on the duration of the finishing period. For example, if your objective is to put on five kilos of carcass gain and you give them average feed value silage with a low level of concentrate, 
them animals will actually be in your shed for about 350 days or nearly a year. So you get to know them on a personal basis. Whereas on the other on the other extreme, if you use ad lib concentrate feeding, you'll put on a kilo of carcass gain, uh, five kilos of carcass gain and approximately a 33 day finishing period. Another important point is that when you're drafting lambs for slaughter out of a finishing system, the weight at slaughter needs to take into consideration, your drafting weight needs to take into consideration the type of diet you're feeding. For example, a high forage based diet with low levels of concentrate, the lambs were having a, a kill out proportion or, or kill out of 43%, whereas when we're feeding ad lib concentrate, the kill out was 49%. There's a massive difference, and you've covered quite a lot in that. But not to go back on too much of it, but in reality, Tim, that medium feed value silage, 70 DMD, which a lot would say was very good. We know it's average when we look at the results. You're really at nothing in the finishing system there, bar the fact that it's providing roughage. It's not doing anything for performance. Just to maybe clarify that one out, is that the intake of that is limiting in lambs. It's, it's not going to be sufficient to have any impact on performance in reality. You're quite true. If you've got mediocre feed value grass silage, it has a, it, it's its use is, is limited. And basically, if you're going to use it, it's being used as a forage source, uh, f- forage component, a, a forage source at low levels of inclusion just to aid room and fermentation. It's just uh, roughage, it's, basically. Yeah, it's going to be used as roughage. That's all it's going to be used for. But it's not going to be fed at lib because if you're feeding this stuff at lib, then you're reducing the intake of concentrate. As I mentioned earlier on, when we were in the ad-lib feeding system, we were giving them 0.5 to 0.6 kilos of high feed value grass silage as their roughage source. And it was important from a management point of view that when we were feeding that, that all lambs had access to it at the same period of time because it used to disappear within an hour post-feeding in the morning. Let's just take it to the other extreme. So the high feed value of silage, 75 DMD up. At what point has it a role? So obviously we need concentrate supplementation with it, but some might have that available, might have enough of it available on the farm. If we're going in at feed levels around 0. 0.6, 0. 0.7 of a kilo, are you getting any appreciative level of gain? Can it work in a system? Maybe where housing space isn't a big issue, where they can be carried on for a bit longer. Yeah, high feed value silage would have a role in that kind of system where that you're in no hurry to finish them out of the system. And secondly, you may want to hold them for a period longer and you're, there's no there's no uh, there's, there's no pressure on housing, and you may want to hold them a, a that bit longer to with the anticipation that lamb carcass price will rise next spring. In that kind of situation, using high feed value grass silage uh, plus 0.7 of a kilo of concentrate gave you a, a live weight gain of 182 grams per lamb per day and a carcass gain of 95 grams per lamb per day, which would mean that that system would take about 53 days to produce five kilos of lamb carcass. Okay. So in that kind of situation that if you've got excess high quality silage uh, on your farm and you want to reduce your costs into your system, that is one place that has a role to play. But I think regardless of forage feed value, that you'd want to be feeding at least 0.7 of a kilo of concentrate to keep mo- the lambs moving, to, to get a, an adequate growth rate on them and to flesh them going out of the system. In reality, Tim, if, if you're going much less, you really are looking at a very long store period where look, May work in some systems are waiting for next spring, but for a lot are trying to finish non-runner. Look, another end of this, your margin over feed costs. And I know this is very dependent on the system. Your caveats early, but how quick you need them turn over, when you need them out of the shed, how many you're going to turn over in the year and it. Take the two better options. So our ad lib option and our high feed value silage for something like 0.7, 0.8 of a kilo of concentrate. What's the kind of margin over feeding those systems, Tim? I know it's not an easy question maybe to answer. It's not it's not an easy question to answer, but it depends on what your concentrate price is going to be. And it also uh, it also depends on what your expected carcass value. So, for example, if you want to compare the two systems that you spoke about, Kieran, if you work it out on a daily basis, the margin over feed on a daily basis will be greater in the ad lib concentrate feeding system. And that's and that reason for that is that the lambs are growing faster and they're coming out of the system that bit quicker. But it means then that you can bring in a second bunch of lambs or else your sheds are going to be empty. However, if you take the high forage system with moderate level of concentrate feeding system, it'll take approximately 53 days for these lambs to finish. And they, the total cost, feed cost of bringing these lambs to finish would be similar to that or sl- will be about two euros per head cheaper than the ad-lib concentrate feeding system. But there are other costs in that system, such as housing, 
uh, bedding, etc. Or else, or another issue is if you're a, a full time feeder, that these lambs are taking a longer period to finish of uh, 53 days. Whereas if you're an ad lib concentrate system, you'd have an, another batch of lambs halfway through the system. They're taking up space. Tim, the price sensitivity. So obviously, if carcass increases, it knocks out some of them costs. If concentrate price increase, we see another 50 ton, it's going to have an impact on it. How big an effect is either of them shifts having? If you're increasing concentrate feed price by 50, by 30 euros per ton, in an ad lib concentrate feeding system, your daily cost of feeding to the lambs, it's gone up by five cents. If you're taking an example where you're increasing carcass value or carcass, the price of carcass by 50 cents per kilo, your margin over feed is going to increase uh, by about seven cents per lamb per day. So there's a fine balance in both. Look, maybe just to come back to some more management aspects of it for a moment, um, to maybe just recap for our listeners, you know, entire males, castrates, females, in that order, I assume, in feed efficiency. In terms of feed efficiency, the entire males will have the highest feed efficiency. The, the castrates will be second and the females will be the lowest, uh, will have the poorest converters or feed because they've got a smaller mature body weight and they have a greater potency to put on body fat rather than lean meat. That's what I was going to ask you in terms of fat, and so probably we'd off the way around. Look, the other big one that always crops up and we're talking about finishing is the effect of shearing. Does it have an impact on performance? There are management benefits, I accept, but does it have an impact on performance? You've looked at that previously. Yeah, we've undertaken studies where we've looked at the effect of shearing lambs during the finishing period. And to cut a long story short, what we found was that the animals that were shortened had a higher food intake uh, by about 8%. There was no difference in carcass weight at the point of slaughter. There was no difference in carcass gain. And in terms of feed efficiency, we found that the animals that were shortened had a poor feed conversion efficiency than the unshortened animals. For example, the unshortened lambs gained 5.3 grams of carcass per megajoule of ME intake, whereas the shortened animals only gained 4.9. It's purely the management benefits, more housing space, cleanliness, that's what you're aiming for. That's what, what you're aiming for. If you do do it, it's down to purely management, uh, more, better efficiency use of trust space, uh, better efficiency use of housing space, are other reasons that you may seem fit, but if you're down to increase animal performance in the in the environments that we are working in, we got no beneficial effect whatsoever from a carcass gain or carcass weight point of view. Except and the, the negative was that they had a higher food intake, and the higher food intake was possibly going to uh, maintain body heat or body temperature. So it's really just a management benefit, Tim. Look, uh, very final aspect. We've talked about a lot of systems, and you've given a good level of detail of different performance achieved. The importance of very basics of feed management, health, keeping all them things right, they're going to have a massive impact on any of the systems you've talked about. Yes, they are. Uh, if you go to feed management firstly, the first priority is clean water. The second priority is adequate trust space. If you're feeding ad lib concentrate, the ration has to be in front of the animals 24-7 once you've built them up onto it. In our lab, in our system as ad lib feeding, we used to start building them and build them up slowly over 10 days, at which point they were on ad lib concentrate. Also, in that kind of system, when you're building up concentrate, you're withdrawn, slowly withdrawn the forage, but you keep a minimum of 0.5 to 0.6 kilos of uh, on a fresh basis of forage in front of them. And in ad lib concentrate feeding, where you're f- feeding restricted amount of forages or roughage, then all animals need to be able to consume it at the same period of time because it, uh, it disappears shortly after being fed. If you're feeding... Uh, silage uh, ad libitum then you need adequate trust base you need good you need to have clean silage coming into them uh, you need to clean the feed barrier uh, at least twice per week and you need to push the silage up uh, in the morning and in the evening so that they're fresh silage fed on a daily basis uh, health issues need to be uh, watched you need to you need to have, have the animals done for internal parasites such as uh, worms and liver fluke and also be aware that uh, external parasites may be an issue, particularly if you're buying from a number of flocks and mixing animals. So Tim, look, you really can't overlook the basics that's going to have an impact on any of those systems. And given the costs involved, it's important we get them right. Look, it was great having you on today. You went through a lot of detail and appreciate your time. Thanks, Ciarán. We're going to finish the episode up at this point. As Tim has outlined at the start, you need to ask a couple of questions of your own finishing system on the farm, in particular when you expect or when you need those lambs sold by that's going to have a major impact on what kind of a diet you choose and how you manage it. And as you indicated at the very end, the basics of good feed management, good husbandry can have a big impact on any of those systems. 
That's it for me for this episode. Again, for updates from our sheep program, keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chalk Sheep. I'm Karen Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe and tune in to future episodes.